and welcome to Mrs. Palmer's Picks. I'm Mrs. Palmer and I'm going to read you a story. Today we're going to read Just Like Rube Goldberg, The Incredible True Story of the Man Behind the Machines and it is by Sarah Aronson. You can see some of the illustrations of Rube Goldberg machines. Question. How do you become a successful award-winning artist and famous inventor without inventing anything at all? This is not a trick question. A man named Rube Goldberg did it. In a funny way, his life was just like one of his famous inventions, an improbable and inefficient chain reaction that ends up making perfect sense. From the time he was a boy, Rube Goldberg loved to draw. We're not just talking about simple stuff here. As early as four years old, Rube traced the cartoons he found in his books. At 11, he took official art classes from a uh, sign painter. Rube might have been a quiet boy. He might have been shy, but he was determined to be a great cartoonist for a big time newspaper. Unfortunately, when he told his family, they were absolutely horrified. Being beyond dismayed, Rube's father, Max, had emigrated from Germany to America to give his family a chance for a better life. He didn't want his son to end up a beggar on the streets. So to please his father, Rube went to the University of California, Berkeley, studied engineering, and after graduation, got a job with the city of San Francisco Department of Water and Sewers. It was a good job. It paid well. That could have been the end of the story, right? Wrong. Rube detested shoveling tunnels in, uh, in mines 2,000 feet underground. He didn't enjoy mapping sewer pipes either, and he wasn't very impressed with the city's government. Rube still wanted to draw comics for a big-time newspaper. So after six months, he quit engineering and started over. And so the words go through. That's why I was having trouble re reading. They go through the pipes. He got a job at the San Francisco Chronicle. For $8 a week, Rube emptied wastebaskets, cleaned the floors, and filed photographs in the documents morgue. And whenever he had a chance, Rube drew, and drew, and drew. Day after day, Rube submitted his cartoons to the editor. Night after night, the editor mostly said no. When he said yes, Rube sometimes got paid, but other times he just got out of the office tasks he didn't like to do. After a year, Rube convinced the sports department of the San Francisco Bulletin to hire him, and after that, he was a little more successful. He developed his style, the paper he ran his cartoons, a column too. This might have been the next end of the story, but then the ground shook. Literally. The 1906 earthquake in San Francisco crumbled the city and left many people without jobs and homes. In the wake of disaster, it can be hard for people to focus on their dreams. It can be even harder to feel hopeful. But Rube didn't give up on his dream. Instead, he did the only thing he could do. He drew comics to cheer people up. And then he made a big decision. In 1906, there was only one place where a guy like Rube could really make it big. It was the place he called the front row, the cartoon capital of the country, New York City. So he got on a train and headed east. He didn't have much, $200 and a diamond ring. The ring was a gift from his father, just in case Rube needed to sell it to buy a ticket back home. After 12 days of pounding the pavement, lugging his art from newspaper to newspaper, Rube did it. He got a job as a cartoonist at a big time paper, the New York Evening Mail. He had made it. Right off the bat, Rube became a celebrity. Readers couldn't wait to see what he had to say about all kinds of things. Like sports and politics and the silliness of everyday life. And here are some of his cartoons. But maybe more than anything else, everyone loved reading about Rube's alter ego, Professor Lucifer Gargonzola Butts. 
The eccentric professor invented one intricate machine after another, and none of them were straightforward. In fact, they were the opposite of straightforward and often disregarded the laws of physics. Although this was the age when new machines were being invented to make life easier, Rube's screwball contraptions purposefully solved problems in the most surreal and ridiculous ways. Things like, how do you put holes in a donut? Doesn't seem very practical. Or, how do you turn off a light? Or even, how do you cut your own hair? Just like the machines he studied in engineering school, these complicated contraptions required lots and lots of parts, and they always worked, on paper of course. They weren't practical in the real world, but what that was never the point. Rube Goldberg didn't draw machines that solved real world problems. He drew comics to make us look closer and question logic and tickle the imagination. And because of that, these machines accomplished something astounding and more important than any pile of nuts and bolts ever could. They challenge people to use the most amazing machine in the universe. The brain. So let's take it from the top. Rube Goldberg became a stubborn, smart, serious about being funny engineer, office boy, cartoonist, commentator, comic genius, and award-winning artist and inventor whose name is now an adjective in the actual dictionary without inventing a thing. Is this kind of a thing still possible? You bet it is. Figure out what you want, work as hard as you can, and most of all, have a great time getting there. Just like Rube Goldberg. And then a little bit more about Rube Goldberg. I hope you liked the story. If you did, you can check it out at the library. I'll see you later.